been wondering how you can ship items from Africa to Italy, whether in small quantities as an individual or as a business in very huge quantities. In this video, I'm going to break down the whole process for you. I'm going to share with you the requirements, the whole process and the different shipping and handling companies. On this channel, I share videos about fashion, entrepreneurship and how to juggle all this with a full-time job. If you like the sound of that, please subscribe. Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Hilda Gloria. You can always call me Hilda Glosh. I am an entrepreneur and a fashion blogger and I do like to share videos about these two topics. If you are very interested in these, go ahead and hit the red subscribe button down below so that you don't get to miss any of my upcoming videos. I recently shared a video about shipping from Italy to Africa and I did receive um, a request to make one where people can actually ship from Africa to Italy and yes, I am more than pleased to share with you this. If you haven't watched the video yet, I'm going to link it down in the description box below or somewhere up here for you to go ahead and watch it after this one. Now, the first thing is the requirements. What do you need if you would like to ship from Africa to Italy? Now, before I get started, I do have got lots of experience in this because I live in Milan, Italy and I'm an entrepreneur and I do both ways. I do ship back home in Uganda and I do ship from home. So that and I do have some work experience. In 2015, I did work at the World Expo and I did work with lots of people that required to ship tons of goods from Africa to Italy and back. So yes, I'm more than happy to share with you my experience and the things that I've researched about combined together to help you find a solution. First of all, requirements. Now, requirements do differ if you're shipping goods as an individual and in small quantities compared to when shipping as a business in very huge quantities. If you are shipping as an individual a small package for a friend, which is like a gift, all you need is your address and the receiver's address, their name and a shipping company basically that's all you need and probably to know if they are able to transport the kind of good that you'd like to send if you are sending them something like food you have to make sure the company is able to ship it just in time before it actually goes bad which takes us to the different shipping companies that can help you but I'm going to talk about that in the third point now if you are a company there's a ton of requirements for you and if you'd like to send goods for business there's lots of requirements on your side First of all, there has to be a reason why you are sending these goods. Do you have the market? Do you have a handling company or a receiver that is going to handle the goods here? Or are you going to get on plane and actually come and handle the shipment on your own? So you have to provide details of this and actual evidence that these companies do exist and they legally pay taxes in Italy or they work in Italy. Now, the type of good really the type of goods really matters. What I have dealt with usually is food coming from Uganda and usually the request is for business people that it should meet a certain level of standard. Now, for you to know what I'm talking about, you have to go to the Bureau of Standards. Usually on their website, they do tell you what the food should be like. It should be organic because there's lots of non-organic food here and there would be no point for you to actually ship the goods here. That takes me to my next point, which is it should serve a certain purpose, like it should solve a certain problem. If the kind of good you're sending here is going to be useless and nobody is going to be able to buy it or it's not going to solve any solution there's no reason why it will be accepted into the country so that has to be considered as well usually if you're working with food you have probably heard of something called the organic stamp where luckily most of the food that comes from africa and uganda to be specific is organically grown food so it is very easy to get that stamp you get it from the uganda national bureau of standards because it will only be accepted here if it has got that stamp and it makes the process easier for you if you are shipping different stuff like crafts you will not need that stamp but you will have to provide proof that you are 
one of the people that actually make them or you have got a shop of people making these and what are the terms and conditions in which your employees are working is the company legally registered you have to provide proof of all this with documents and if possible photos will be requested your company should be legally registered and should have like a tax number they usually call it um yes they usually call it a tax number and it should have like a tin number and all these things so that it is a streamlined way to show that you actually you pay taxes you don't do taxes your goods will not be allowed to be shipped here for business if your company does not actually pay taxes so yes they need that as well it is a very important requirement and usually delays the process if you don't have your documents in order so yes it is very important that you get your documents in order before you actually even start of thinking of the process the other requirement is that they should be a receiver or like a person you are sending the goods to or a destination and this should be it should also be stated who is going to handle the goods so because when they get here they need to be cleared they have to go through a certain process if they are for business if they are personal gifts of course they won't go through all that hassle but if they have to be taxed and they have to be checked there has to be a handling company that you have got to go through I will mention a few when I go to um, the shipping companies but for now let's move on to the next one which is the process the process is not very different from my previous video where I shared shipping from Italy to Africa. It's more or less the same, it's just that it is a little bit stricter when things are coming into this country, especially for business. Once you have all the requirements that I've mentioned, you have to make sure that you have your documents in order and you have all the goods invoiced and written down specifically in terms of quantity, what is the type of good, what does it do and if it has any specifications like color, um, weight, it should all be stated nicely on the invoice. And then you go ahead and contact the shipping company. Once you have contacted the shipping company, you will be required to fill in that form that requires you to put in all the information that I've mentioned that should be on your invoice. And once everything is accepted, you will be required to bring your goods, measure them and hand them over to the shipping company. And the, ship the shipping company will deal with everything until it arrives on arrival. And then of course you will have to make the payment. Now, my advice is that you consult with different companies and then decide which one you would like to go for because the prices are really different depending on what you're sending, how much of it you are sending and how long the company takes to actually have the goods delivered. Now the time should also be on your side for you to decide if you are sending mainly food which is the commonest thing that um, Africans send to Italy. If you are sending food I would suggest to choose a company that ships within a day or two so that you know your food or any perishable goods do not go bad but if you're sending like crafts that do not rot you can choose any other company. It all depends on the price and what works for you basically. The next step is that the shipping company will give you a receipt that you are going to keep that has got the tracking number and you will keep on tracking the goods as depending on when they told you they would be arriving so that you make sure that you know if they've arrived or not and of course to notify the handling company or the person that is going to be receiving the goods and in case they are lost you have evidence that you know you were tracking the goods here and there and once they arrive that's it you are good to go the process is done once the goods arrive you will receive a notification that they have arrived moving on to the different shipping companies there are so many options that you could use um, for example the national post office I would say the post office uh, for Uganda it is the Uganda post office and the goods will be received through the Italian post office it's called Poste Italiana and they work they collaborate together I don't know the one for Kenya or for the other African countries but for sure there has to be like a national post office that is one of the easiest way especially if you're sending like individual goods or like a gift a small package that's really easy it does take time it takes about 21 days and it's the cheapest option and it has got limitations on how much in terms of quantity it can send it sends maximum 20 kilos so you have to be careful and you know it all depends on how much you want to send and for what purpose and how big it is of course the more the kilos the cheaper the price 
per kilo so yes it all depends on you go ahead and do your research and find out in Uganda usually they do send a kilo for about 4,000 Ugandan shillings I'm not sure about the other countries go ahead and do your research and find out also the post office is very limited to what it can send it cannot send um, very valuable goods like gold you cannot send gold through the post office they will tell you no we cannot send this because we do not have enough insurance we do not have enough security we do not have enough guarantee that it is going to reach your destination by the way sometimes good goods get lost in the post office but that will be a video on its own about risks in shipping but yes you cannot send very valuable goods through the post office you cannot send food through the post office because it takes really long anything perishable anything very valuable anything very heavy is not allowed in the post office otherwise it is the best and the cheapest and i would say um a company that gives you the least headache out of all the options that i've got another good one it is an italian company it is called tnt now if you are shipping with tnt to a different destination which is other than Italy it is a bit more expensive but if they actually if you're actually shipping from a different destination into Italy it is a little bit cheaper and faster because it is an express shipping company and they also do the handling now that is a plus because post post office does not do the handling it just delivers the good or leaves a notice to the receiver that the goods have arrived and then the receiver has to go and pick them up same way as the Uganda post office but TNT brings the goods to the doorstep of the receiver and if there's like tons of goods they are going to handle them clear them and give you all the invoices so which is a plus if you would like to send lots of goods and you want them to arrive on time that is a good one Another one is DHL, but we all know DHL is on the upper side. Goods can arrive in a day, goods can arrive in two days. Really express arrives on time, but it is expensive. It is expensive. It is about 150 euros to ship from Uganda. A document, which is less than a kilo, 150 euros to ship it to Italy. So think about having very many kilos. Of course, the more the kilos, the cheaper it is very reliable i would say 99 percent guaranteed your goods are going to arrive and safely and they're going to arrive on time but i can't handle the prices but it, it's all up to you if you can handle the prices if it's very urgent that you need to send you know something that you need to ship something go ahead and use dhl now when it comes to um shipping like lots of goods that are more than 20 kilos or like that are tons of kilos for example food crafts and things sent for business from africa to italy i would suggest using air cargo now i have used air cargo they gave me a lot of headache goods didn't arrive on time like when i did expect them the clearing process was very long but the prices are really good and it doesn't take that long they did arrive on the night they were supposed to arrive they arrived the night after and I don't know I did suffer a little bit but they are a good one when it comes to price per kilo so yes go ahead and use them I have used Ethiopian Airlines they were good I have used Egypt Air from Uganda to Italy they were really good I've used Kenyan Airways Kenyan Airways I lost a bag but they did deliver the rest so yes compare the options and see what works for you but they delivered more than a thousand kilos so yes do consider them think about them and of course they know the standards being african airlines they do know the standards and they're able to advise you accordingly on what you need to do then when you go to like european or like foreign um or non-African like airlines I would say so yes do consider those they do really help if you need any information just go online check for for example Ethiopian Airlines cargo air cargo and they will give you a lot of advice customer care you're going to ask lots of questions and they will let you know about every requirement their working hours when you can go when you can't go they're really really helpful so yes Cargo Air is really really helpful for lots of goods that will arrive early enough. I, early enough, I mean four days, uh, including handling. Now moving on to the slowest, and by slowest I mean more than a month. Um, we have got Water Cargo. Now, Water Cargo is really cheap, and it takes like containers that is tons and tons of kilos. And if you're not in a rush 
you could use it but also you have to know that once the goods arrive they do not arrive in the city center so they arrive at a certain port and then you have to pay for another company to do the clearing and it's a lot and they have to bring it to the city center where probably you have to receive them or somebody has to receive them so it's a little bit of a hassle but you can get there you know business people you have to take the risk you have to take the headache and go through it you have to be strong but yes i would suggest cargo for things like very heavy crafts like made of wood or what else do we export from uganda what else do we sell from uganda lots of heavy stuff that we could sell from africa to italy that are really really heavy this option would be the best if you have a lot and you don't mind when they will arrive more than a month or a month somewhere in there and you can pay for a handling uh, a handling company to do the handling services for you once the goods arrive here now what handling companies am i talking about we have got a lovely company here that i have worked with and i do guarantee they are a bit slow they work in italian so you have to suffer with the language but it works magic it is called db Shenka. they're not sponsoring this i'm only mentioning them because they did a very good job and yes they will handle the goods and um, make sure that they are actually delivered their trucks will bring the goods to where you would like them to be so yes consider them i have got another one it's called msc it is a nice one but those only deliver to a certain port and they would ask you if you'd like them to continue but of course they're going to outsource that to another handling company of which it is going to come at an added cost so yes think about all these options and choose what company is best for you i really cannot choose for you because i do not know what you're selling I don't know how much of it you would like to send. I don't know if you're sending just a gift, but I do hope that this video has been very helpful. If you think it can help someone, please share it. Leave me a comment down below if you would like me to make any other video, or if you have anything to add or to ask about what I have mentioned in the video. Thank you so much for the support and I will see you in my next one. Bye.